In this video I'll be showing you how to reclaim and prepare clay. You can put your dry scraps of clay into a bucket with some water to allow the clay to rehydrate over some time. After a while the clay will rehydrate into a sloppy mixture which you can spread onto a plaster bat. If you don't have a plaster bat you can also use a wooden board, the process will just take a little longer. So here I am spreading out the mixture um, in a layer onto the plaster bat. And what we're trying to do here is remove the excess water in the clay so it becomes a firmer consistency to work with. Um, this can either happen through evaporation into the air or why we use a plaster bat is that the water gets sucked out of the clay into the bat. I'm then poking holes into the clay to aid this process. So after some time has passed, you can see the consistency of the clay is much firmer compared to the sloppy mixture before. So I gather up the clay from the plaster bat and then form it into a ball to start the wedging process. So here I'm trying to remove any air bubbles in the clay and also give it a more even consistency. Here I'm using a wedging technique called spiral wedging, where I rock the clay back and forth in a circular motion, which produces these small folds that help to remove air bubbles. So after wedging the reclaimed clay, you can see it's a very soft consistency. I'll use this clay to wedge into some more clay I prepared earlier, which is a hard consistency. I do this by flattening out the harder clay and on top I smush in the softer clay. I then cut this to a size that I can more easily wedge. The reason we do this is that we want to work with clay of optimal firmness. Too hard and it can put pressure on our joints while we're working with it and too soft it can make it more challenging when we're trying to form it into our various pottery items. So here I gather the clay up into a ball and start the process of spiral wedging again. So here I'm rocking the clay back and forth in a circular motion as I wedge. Here you can see me grabbing the top part of the clay, which when I rock the clay back and forth, I loosen my grip and grab the adjacent bit of clay. And this aids the rotation. Here you can see the folds of the clay as I'm moving um, the clay around. And this is what's helping to remove the air bubbles and also produce a more consistent consistency. As I come to the end of the wedging process, I grab more clay and start to roll it up into a ball. You can check to see if there's any air bubbles in the clay by cutting it in half. Here you can see that there are still a few air bubbles in the clay so I then re-wedge the piece of clay to remove these last air bubbles. Using the same wedging motion, I keep going until I'm happy that all the air bubbles have been removed. I then roll it out to compress the clay into one block and slam it down. Now your clay is ready to use.